Data science interviews can be nerve wracking, especially when it comes to showcasing your coding skills under pressure. But we're here to guide you through some coding pitfalls and how to avoid them. So I'll be talking about 10 common coding mistakes on interviews. Let's get started. Mistake one, not fully understanding the problem. It's super important to fully understand the problem before even thinking about the solution. You need to ask a lot of clarifying questions. Don't assume things that are not explicitly stated because sometimes interviewers intentionally leave certain details vague to assess your problem solving and communication skills. This is what they're really looking for. Do you know how to communicate and problem solve? Or do you simply just dive into solutioning mode? Mistake number two, neglecting to discuss assumptions. So this goes hand in hand with not understanding the problem fully. Sometimes candidates make assumptions about the problem without fully dissecting and discussing them with the interviewer. This leads to obviously misaligned solutions or incorrect solutions. And so when you think about an example here, suppose you get a problem that's vague about whether or not data could be negative. Don't assume, just ask and clarify. Always discuss your assumptions with the interviewer to ensure that you're solving the right problem and edge cases and not misunderstanding the requirements. Mistake number three, neglecting time and space complexity. Crafting a solution that works is really just the first step. Optimizing it is where your skills will truly shine. So be mindful of the time and space complexity of your code. Discuss the trade-offs and potential improvements with the interviewer and showcase your depth of knowledge and analytical skills. For example, if your solution includes joins in a SQL interview, you should know how this affects runtime and find ways to make it faster if possible. Perhaps you can pre-process a table, you can re-index, or you can eliminate the join together maybe. Always strive for the most efficient solution and be ready to discuss the time and space complexity of your code. Mistake four, ignoring edge cases. A solution that doesn't account for all possible scenarios is incomplete. You need to ensure that your code can handle all possible scenarios and edge cases. For example, if you're writing a function to find the square root of a number, consider these edge cases. What happens is if your input is negative? or zero, or an extremely large number, what happens then? Mistake number five, failing to communicate your thought process clearly. Data scientists often deep dive into problem solving without mentioning their thought process, which may be okay for your day-to-day -day job, but obviously not good in an interview. Interviewers value your analytical and problem solving skills, and that only becomes evident when you actually start talking. For example, if you're solving a problem related to string manipulation, you might want to discuss all the possible algorithms and why you might choose one over the other, considering the specific problem constraints. This discussion is meant to be a two-way street. It's meant to be a dialogue. And at the end, the interviewer should get a good understanding of how you think through a problem and whether or not you have the skills to be able to actually implement that, that solution. The next mistake, overlooking simplicity and readability in your code. In an attempt to oppress, candidates often opt for complex solution when simpler ones would suffice. Remember, clear, readable code is preferable and usually more maintainable than overly complex, clever code. So always prioritize simplicity and code readability in your solutions. Your code should be easy for others to read and maintain. Which brings us to the next mistake, overlooking scalable solutions. Sometimes candidates provide solutions that work for the provided data or the provided input, but fail to scale for larger inputs or all possible edge cases and scenarios. For example, if you're trying to find the employee with the highest salary in a table with salaries, are you gonna implement a limit one or a ranking function for your SQL solution? It probably should be the ranking function because you always want to consider and discuss the scalability of your solution with the interviewer, ensuring that it would work even if the data changes or scales up in size. Mistake eight, failing to consider alternative approaches. Sometimes candidates stick with the first solution that comes to mind without considering alternative, potentially more efficient approaches. 
An example of this is implementing a sorting algorithm from scratch instead of using a library or a pre-built function that can already do its job. While your solution is valid, discussing alternative approaches and their trade-offs demonstrate a depth of knowledge and analytical thinking. Mistake nine, over-reliance on frameworks and libraries. This is contrary to my last example, but while libraries and frameworks are useful, over-relying on them without understanding the underlying mechanisms and theory can be a pitfall. An example of this is using machine learning libraries without a clear understanding of the underlying algorithms being used. So if you choose to talk about and explain frameworks and libraries in your solution, be prepared to also discuss the underlying theory principles of these algorithms and functions so you can showcase your depth of knowledge. Now our last mistake is neglecting the business context because sometimes candidates solely focus on the technical problem at hand and they completely ignore the larger business context and impact. For example, only focusing on model accuracy without even considering the business impact like cost or user impact. So that's it. Those are the 10 most common mistakes made on coding interviews. If you want more data science resources, please subscribe to this channel and go to stratascratch.com for your data science resource.